don't know about you, but I'm overwhelmed. I'm so glad to see so many of you here tonight. I'm Lynette Pullman. It's my distinct honor to be the director and the chief curator of the university museums at Iowa State. On behalf of the staff, the Advancement Council, and the Beyond the Glass Committee, I'd like to welcome all of the guests who have traveled from Europe, California, Texas, Massachusetts, and just across the street to be with us tonight. Everyone is so welcome, and I'm so pleased you're all here. At the conclusion of the program, we're going to progress inside the Bernier, the moment you've been waiting for. But when we do, before we go in, to protect and preserve the artwork, I'm going to ask you please not to take any food, beverage, or photographs in the museum. But in a little while, you can take a lot of selfies with the chandeliers and the designer desserts, and please post them social media. I don't know how to do that, but I know you do. 44 years ago tonight, in 1975 at 7 p.m., the Henry J. Brunier Galleries opened. While Anne and Henry Brunier were never able to be here to experience the museum they founded, I am pleased to share with you that tonight, the current president of Henry's firm is with us, Mike Davies. Mike, I have no idea where you are. Please raise your hand. Back there. If you want to know the real history of Henry Brunier, corner Mike. Or come to the program tomorrow at 1110. Um, now let the celebrating begin. We have some exciting announcements, and I want the museum staff to share that with you. My name is Adrienne Jeanette. I'm the Associate Curator of Collections and Education with the University Museums. And I'm incredibly honored and excited to tell you about the three exhibitions that we'll be having in the museum. Now that it's reopened after two years, I can finally start working again. I've been doing nothing. Um, <laughs> not true, I swear. Uh, so we have three great exhibitions. We've got some pottery and the decorative arts gallery that are recent acquisition, acquisitions, can't speak, from several important donors and collectors who have been incredibly generous. In the main gallery, we have an amazing exhibition that's looking at the history of artists in Iowa and arts in Iowa, curated by Dr. Leah Rossin DeLong, who's an important friend and collaborator, and also wrote a publication for it. So please take a look at that. It's a really important moment in art history for Iowa and looking at what was happening for the first 100, 120 years in the arts in Iowa from 1830 to about 1950. And in the front, we have the new, beautiful Laurie A. Jacobson Gallery, an amazing digital art exhibition. And in the back, we've got Loebmeyer chandeliers. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> uh, these chandeliers are from Austria uh, the, by a firm named Loebmeyer that has been owned by the same family since 1823. It's in the sixth generation family. Uh, they're handmade with Swarovski crystals and uh, I think over 130 lights. Um, and these are called the Met chandeliers. The original ones are in the Metropolitan Opera in uh, New York City and they were designed in 1963 to 66. So they fit with the time period of this building and I hope you all love them as much as we do. Thank you so much. Adrian is a tough act to follow with those lights. <laughs> I kept telling people, oh my gosh, wait till you see them turned on. Well, here you go. Uh, <laughs> they deserve their moment for sure. And um, Adrienne didn't say that was her husband in the closet turning them on early. <laughs> well, my name is Allison Sheridan. I'm the collections manager. I also manage the Farmhouse Museum and I'm the publications person. Um, and so multi-hatted, but my biggest Pat is the collections manager, and we manage about 30,000 objects for the permanent collection. And I want to thank Art Hilsinger and Barbara Jansen for their wonderful donation that helped us to get a brand new storage space. So we have the same footprint, but we have this really cool compacting storage that has allowed us to really pack in the objects in a safe manner. And so a huge thank you to them. I was joking earlier today that I have worked here 18 years today, and this is the highlight of my career here. So you've made the little collection manager's heart flutter, flutter. <laughs> I want to also thank all of the interns that helped us over the years. There were so many of them, bless their hearts, they had to sit on the floor and inventory objects 
and move objects and help us shelve objects. And it isn't really the most glamorous task, but they did it with grace and absolutely love them for that. And so to all the interns that are out there that helped with this project, thank you. Ooh, two hard acts to follow. Uh, I'm Lila Anderson. I'm the educator of visual literacy and learning here at University Museums. Last year, University Museums reached 12,000 students across disciplines through in-curriculum programming, and it's our hope that this year we can increase that number. In addition to those in-curriculum impacts that we have, we also have a robust plan for um, public programs throughout this coming year. Hopefully those programs can bring depth to the exhibitions that we have and engage both the ISU community but also the wider community. The large majority of those programs are made possible uh, with the, from generous support from the Kathy and John Howell Art Enrichment Program. And we are so grateful for them in helping us to achieve our core mission of educating and uh, fostering understanding of the visual arts. So, thank you. I'm Sue Olson. I'm the Membership and Development Coordinator at the University Museums. And I would like to thank all of you for coming, and especially the over 100 donors that helped make this fabulous project that you're going to see soon, this renovation project of the Brunier Reality. We're very thrilled, and it's been a, a, quite a year to get through all of this, but it's wonderful, and you're going to love it. So, can't wait for everyone to see it. Um, this $1.95 million project is because of the collaborative efforts of the ISU Foundation um, with special thanks to Rachel Carricker, she's here somewhere, um, and the Iowa State University Administration and our Advancement Council and the University Museums. Um, it's because of everyone here that comes and supports us and we hope you enjoy your night. I'm sure you're going to love it and please, please come back. <laughs> This is the museum dream team. It wouldn't happen without them. Another round of applause as they leave the stage. Thank you. There you go. There are more announcements throughout the program, so stay alert. All gifts to the University Museum's programs and pro projects are vital. It wouldn't happen without private dollars. Some gifts are transformative. Joyce Tomlinson Brewer was a graduate of Iowa State and lived an artful life, creating, collecting, and enjoying art. Her estate created the newly established Joyce Tomlinson Brewer Endowment for Art Acquisition. This $5 million endowment, and let me repeat that number, $5 million endowment has made possible the acquisition of the beautiful chandeliers you've just witnessed, as well as the Jennifer Stein Camp, a show that you will experience and will really give us an edge as we go forward to, high, to also purchase and commission high quality works of art. Impactful works of art are the core aesthetic and intellectual center of any museum. This endowed gift is truly a transformative gift for Iowa State as well as the museums. It is with gratitude that I acknowledge the groups and people who have labored and made this Brunier renovation possible, and I mean labored. There are over 300 individuals who participated in the renovation in some capacity. I would love to recognize each of them individually, but instead, we'll name them by affiliation. Please know that each of you have my sincere and deep appreciation. I'll begin by the Wilson Group as the general contractor and their subcontractors. And I'm not gonna characterize too many people or too many organizations here, but I just wanna say the museum ladies adore the Wilson gentlemen. <laughs> they were fabulous, just fabulous on this project. Others who have helped them is DLR Architects, Facilities Planning and Management, ISU Foundation, Iowa State Center and Venue Works, Iowa State Logistics and Support Services, Printing Services, Information Technology, Environmental Health and Safety, Procurement Services, Music and Theater Department, the Police. Arts and Visual Culture Department, ISU Extension, Administration at all levels. University Relations, University Marketing, ISU Athletics, Lohmeyer of Vienna, Conserve Art, 
University Museum staff, students, volunteers, and our Advancement Council. This lovely event has been thoughtfully and thoroughly planned by the Beyond the Glass Committee. My sincere appreciation to them and to the community donors and sponsors who have made this evening, lovely evening for us possible. I also deeply appreciate Wendy and Robert in so many ways. Uh, they have acted as co-chairs uh, co for this event. And as you may have heard, her schedule's a little busy. And I thought, you know, just a few close friends tonight, she'd have a relaxing evening. So we'll see how that goes. Now it's time for audience participation moment, please. For all of you who are in the audience who had some part in this renovation, whatever it is, donor, laborer, enthusiast, sponsor, whatever, please raise your hand. And I can see you, so I want to know. Norman, raise your hand. Raise them high, folks. I know, I know, I'm looking at you. I see you. These are fabulous folks. Give them a great round of applause. <laughs> It is my great honor to introduce Wendy Winterstein, 16th president of Iowa State University. Wendy advocates all things Iowa State, and her leadership in advancing the University Museum's education and aesthetic impact are significant. Her artistic vision continues to propel and nurture the University Museums, including the Brunier Art Museum, to bring the museum for and of the people to you. And that is part of our land-grant mission. Please welcome President Winterstein. Lynette, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here tonight with all of your friends. What a great celebration. The Brunier Art Museum is truly a very special place. It's also a very special part of Iowa State University's learning environment and our educational programs. The Brunier Art Museum, more, and more broadly, the work of university museums, increases the visual literacy and creativity of our students, faculty, and staff. Art provides the opportunity for us to better understand different cultures and to learn about Iowa State's own cultural heritage. In my personal journey at Iowa State, art has played an important role. Art has allowed me to share important stories with our students, alums, and friends. Christian Peterson's sculpture of George Washington Carver tells the story of our first African-American student graduate. Rose Franson's painting, Do You Know What Is Inside This Flower? George Washington Carver mentors Henry A. Wallace, reminds us all of the deep connection between Carver and Wallace, Wallace who went on to found Pioneer Hybrid. And now just a quick question for all of you that I've stolen from the great museum staff, and that is you think of the art collection in the university museums, what is the heaviest object? So I'd like some audience participation now. <laughs> what is the heaviest object? Yes. <laughs> so did you all hear that? The heaviest object in the collection is the Farmhouse Museum. Another important part of my journey to be associated with the Farmhouse Museum where we had the, one of the most recent deans, Dean Andre, actually live in the Farmhouse Museum with his family. I'm glad we didn't have to do that. <laughs> Art is an essential component of our curriculum, inspiring us to think and discover, to challenge and create in different and new ways. In a few minutes, when we get our first look behind the glass of the newly renovated museum, the works of art on display will remind us that creative, creative expression transcends our academic disciplines. Art is a vibrant part of the fabric of our land-grant mission, and the Brunier Art Museum helps us to enhance how we educate, how we innovate, and how we engage our campus and our community. That is why this renovation project has a significant impact 
in how we are moving Iowa State University forward. It not only creates a more welcoming and accessible space for visitors, but it expands our capacity for high impact, high profile exhibits, and it will provide more educational engagement opportunities for our students. We are so proud of the work of the University Museums to enhance the value and meaning in all that we do to make Iowa and the world a better place. So now it's important to recognize the star of tonight, and that's Lynette Pullman. A round of applause for Lynette. As I've walked around the room tonight, what is the common theme? It's about Lynette's vision. It's about her commitment. It's about the hard work that she does every day. It's about the work of her wonderful husband, John, that is with her every day. <laughs> Lynette already introduced her staff, but what a great team. Another round of applause for Lynette's team. We would not be here tonight without the wonderful donors, some of which have already been recognized. I'm going to recognize some of them again. We are deeply grateful for their support to make this project a reality. I'd like to begin by thanking Jason Kogan. We are so honored that he would invest in this project to continue the wonderful legacy of his wife, Lori. The Lori A. Jacobson Gallery significantly expands the capacity of the Brunier Art Museum it allows us to showcase more works from our permanent collection, as well as loaned exhibition. A round of applause for Jason. <laughs> and I want to add my thanks to Barbara Jansen and Art Hilsinger for investing in a namespace for the permanent collection vault. These two individuals are true they're forever true for Iowa State. A round of applause for our... I also want to recognize a few other individuals. Marcia and Jim Burrell, Beverly and Warden Madden, Ray Riley, Diane and Jim Patton. A round of applause for these wonderful folks. And truly, the project would not be complete without the more than 100 donors that have contributed. So one more round of applause for all of you. It is now my privilege to introduce Jason Kogan. As I mentioned, uh, Jason is the husband of Lori A. Jacobson. He is retired following a distinguished career as a private attorney and assistant United States attorney for the District of Columbia. He currently serves as the only male on the 31 member Iris Cantor UCLA Women's Health Center Executive Advisory Board. The board supports research and education into women's health issues. Jason makes his home in Los Angeles and is an avid museum patron. Please join me in welcoming Jason and thanking him again for making Lori's legacy part of this great project. Thank you, President Winterstein. Uh, as you know, I'm from California, and this is a rare occasion for me because I'm wearing a tie. We don't dress up very often. But thank you for inviting me to speak. And I want to thank you all for being here tonight to celebrate the reopening of the museum and the dedication of the gallery in Lori's name. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Lori, because I assume most of you probably don't know her. Lori was a student at Iowa State back in the 70s, shortly after the museum opened, and she happened to come to the museum to work in her third year, and she wasn't here very long, and she realized this is what she wanted to do in the li her life, become a, a museum professional. And that was helped by Lynette Pullman, who was then deputy director. 
Lynette took Lori under her wing and became Lori's mentor. Uh, and Lori realized that this would be her path. She wanted to be a museum professional, so what did she do? She absorbed everything that Lynette was able to share with her. Uh, Lori even stayed on for a year after graduation to learn some more about the museum world. But I want to give you, uh, tell you one anecdote about that year which Lori stayed on uh, it shows you early on Lori's passion as well as Lynette's. And that year, Lori and Lynette decided to take a road trip. Now, we've all heard what road trips are like, but what I'm going to tell you is a very unusual type of road trip. So what they did, they left and drove from Ames to Boston to attend the National Museum Conference. They drove down to Virginia, back to Ames, over, it took three weeks. They didn't have much money. They slept in the car a few nights. They only stayed in a hotel four or five nights, and they accepted the generosity of various people whose doors they knocked on to take us in for the night. So you wonder, what were they doing during these three weeks? Well, what did they do? They, they set what may be a record. During those three weeks, the road trip was they visited about 100 museums. And that, that was sort of the, be the beginning with Lori's enhancement, you know, an idea of what she was going to do forward. So Lori's interest in the museum still started early. She, uh, this museum working here sort of opened up her path to her legacy. It gave Lori the opportunity to get her start. And when Lori became a museum professional, working at her first museum in Texas when she left here, to having her own company for years in the Washington, D.C., where she designed and developed uh, museum exhibits, strategic planning for museums. In fact, one of the things that Lori did was the strategic planning here for the Christian Peterson Museum over 10 years ago. So if you, once you go in later into the museum, if you turn to the right on the right wall, you'll see a, a story about Lori and her all accomplishments and all the things she did when she returned to Iowa State, not just to work on museums, but for Iowa State, for the university uh, itself. So, so th this encompassed her whole life, the museum. So I became a museum person also. I've been to a lot of museums, and I have to say, what I saw here earlier today uh, can't be duplicated in a lot of places. Uh, it's a first-class museum. So what Lori did, and so what she did, essentially, she started her path here, the door opened for legacy, but then we've come full cir circle with Lori's legacy. Now with the naming of the Lori Jacobson Gallery, but that doesn't stop there. Lori wanted to give back to the university and to the museum. So what did Lori do? She left some money in her state for a unique scholarship for a student working solely at the museum, not because for a course of study, not for any program, but solely for a student who works at the museum. And the Lori also was very modest. You won't see her name in many places around Iowa State. So when Lori created the scholarship, she named it after Lynette Pullman. And, and so it became the Lynette Pullman Student Mentoring Scholarship, which now has become a fellow, it supports the Lynette Pullman Fellowship. So every year, there'll be a student who will be honored with this award. And I want to read to you a quote with Lori's intention and why this, her experience here at Iowa State was so important. And this is from a detailed description of what she wanted for the scholarship. And what Lori wrote was, it gives me great satisfaction to know that I am playing a role in University Museum's mission that includes providing students with mentoring and training opportunities, as my career is a direct result of that commitment fulfilled by Lynette Pullman over the course of her tenure at the museums. And tonight, I have the honor of presenting to you the, the recipient of the first fellowship for the first year to work the museums, and I'd like to introduce Sarah Bartlett. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to the museum staff who worked tirelessly over the last year and a half to make sure that everything got done for tonight. Uh, and I worked with many of them, and, they, and you've heard some of them speak, and they really are what they look like and what they do. They're terrific. But I have a special, special thank you, and that has to be for Lynette Pullman. It was for her leadership 
and her vision that this museum over the years has become what it is, and, and which ended up in this renovated, beautiful museum and the Laurie Jacobson Gallery. And I want to personally thank Lynette for being Laurie's mentor and helping her start her career to get where she is, because but not for that, we wouldn't be here tonight. And Lynette, uh, for all that, I, um, you have forever my gratitude. In closing, I want to tell you that, as you might guess, because of Lori's career, we spent a lot of time in museums. So I learned to walk the museum. If I didn't like a label or something, I know right away. The, or the paint on the wall was the wrong paint for the exhibition. So, but, uh, so that gives me some background in looking at what I see here today. And I can honestly tell you from my experience, the word I would use to describe this museum, it is a gem. And I think you should... <laughs> and I think and urge you to visit and take advantage of all it has to offer, its programs, its talks, its exhibitions, everything it has. Because when you think about it, whether you're a student, whether you're a professional, whether you're a retiree who's interested in the arts, you can walk in there and you might find something that can light your path, just as the museum lit Lori's path. Thank you. Once again, thank you for all for coming. And now, really what we've been waiting for is to process into the gallery. And if you'll allow Jason and I to be the first in, we'll invite the rest of you to follow. Thank you. <laughs>